April 3rd marked 40 years since the first call using a mobile phone. In 1973, Motorola engineer Martin Cooper made the call from 6th Avenue in New York. Ten years later, the first portable phone was on the market for a whopping $4,000. Well, Rick Panaleo joins us now for more on the remarkable history of the cell phone. Rick writes VOA's Science World blog. Thank you so much, Rick, for being well, on the show. Great to be here again, Alex. So it's very interesting. In 1973, Motorola thought that cell phones would only have a major use by businesses. But mm -hmm. we can see that that was very much wrong. Uh, well, like all good things in the past, you know, the, the best is yet to come. Uh, but it's interesting, you mentioned $4,000. Now, that's just for the phone itself, but you had to also pay a $50 per month service fee, plus you had per minute charges, which were 45 cents during peak hours and 24 cents during non-peak hours. That adds up to a good chunk of change. That's a lot of money, especially yeah. now when you see how cell phone prices are substantially, I mean mm -hmm. remarkably, mm -hmm. lower than that. So what was it that changed in the cell phone market that allowed that transition from business use to personal use? I, I would have to say in a word, competition. Uh, I mean, early on, uh, the cell phone carriers, cell phone manufacturers saw that they had a good thing going with the cell phones. And although the prices initially were really expensive, people still bought them. And along with the practical reasons for using a cell phone, uh, of course, thinking back to the 1980s, 1990s, a lot of people bought them for sta uh, status symbols. It's like, if I have a cell phone, I must be really cool and I must be rich and, and such. So as other people started catching on to that, the demand for cell phones grew. And as the demand for cell phones grew, of course, other companies became involved and trying to get their own little niche into the, uh, into the technology, developed their own cell phones. And of course, now you have widespread use of uh, cellular technology and it's evolved tremendously in the years since. Now, and speaking about the evolution, let's talk about the evolution of the look okay. of the cell phone. Right. So what did we have? We started out we started with these with huge phones. The brick. Yes, the, the brick. The brick weighed, weighed almost a, a little over a kilogram. Wow. Yeah, and then and then I, and it was called uh, I think the Dynatech, and then it went. Imagine to, carrying that in your pocket. <laughs> well, they, for a while they called it a bag phone because yeah. you had to carry you had it to in its own that, little yeah, little right, right. little holster. But the but Motorola soon came out with a, a next in a series where it had a, made it smaller and then a flip phone and then it got smaller and smaller from there. Now, what about the significance of cell phones in the international market? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because it is is a major player because because technology for uh, uh, landlines, which are the normal home telephone line systems in developing countries, for example basically non-existent. So uh, the communications um, uh, people in those countries thought, well, let's hop, hopscotch, let's, let's jump over, and instead of putting our money into a technology that may be dated anyway, let's spend the money and build a good cellular phone system. And that's why many developing countries are leading the world in cell phone use. Absolutely, you see it all over. Well, right. Rick, before we let you go, we wanted to talk about a video that's been circulating around the internet Researchers at the University of California, Santa Cruz, have taught a California sea lion named Ronan how to keep a beat. Now, Rick, this, of course, <laughs> makes for some really interesting video. It and, certainly does. Yeah, and the sea lion apparently is the first mammal that's not a human to be able to be shown to be able to keep a beat. So. And, and evidently, it's, it's not just mimicry, because they thought at first that the beekeeping by other animals other than humans was due to vocal mimicry. But this, this animal, this, uh, this Ronan, the sea lion, was he dances better than me, first of all. Uh, and, uh, and, yeah, he's, and got, he's got his groove he's got, on. Yeah, he's definitely, yeah. and, he, and the thing is, the researchers varied the beat and the tempo of the music, so, and he kept up with it. Yeah, actually, so, I think it was a she, actually, the sea oh, lion. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, but, uh, but, but, but the Ronan is an amazing yes. creature, and, and right now I understand her favorite song is Boogie Wonderland. Yes. From uh, <laughs> the Earth, Wind, and Fire, and the Emotions, but also Bringing like... Bringing disco back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, see, again, I'm dating myself here, but I remember Disco Duck, but I don't remember Disco, disco Sea Lion. Disco Sea Lion. Yeah. Well, yeah, such interesting things coming out. Right. Well, we'll watch for more with that. Rick Penaleo again, is our VOA Science World blogger. Thanks again, Rick, Thanks for so joining much. us. And be sure to check out Rick's blog at voanews.com.